good evening friends welcome to our scripture reading i hope you can hear me today's day eight of our scripture reading of the new testament so tonight we shall continue from the gospel of matthew from chapter 17 gospel of matthew from chapter 17 let us begin the scripture reading by signing ourselves in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew from chapter 17. The Transfiguration Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, this is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. And the disciples asked him, Why then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? He replied, Elijah is indeed coming and will restore all things. But I tell you that Elijah has already come and they did not recognize him. But they did, not, but they did to him whatever they pleased so also the Son of Man is about to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was speaking to them about John the Baptist. Jesus cures a boy with the demon. <clears throat> when they came to the crowd, a man came to him, knelt before him and said, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and he suffers terribly, he often falls into the fire and often into the water. And I, brought, and I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Jesus answered, You faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you? How much longer must I put up with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him. And the boy was cured instantly. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? He said to them, Because of your little faith. For truly I tell you, If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, You will say to this mountain, Move from here to there, And it will move, And nothing will be impossible for you. Jesus again, Jesus again foretells his death and resurrection. As they were gathering in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the human hands, and they will kill him, and on the third day he will be raised. And they were greatly distressed. Jesus and the Temple Tax When they reached Capernaum, the collectors of the temple tax came to Peter and said, Does your teacher not pay the temple tax? He said, Yes, he does. And when he came home, Jesus spoke of it first, asking, What do you think, Simon? From who do kings of the earth take toll or tribute? From their children or from others? When Peter said, From others, Jesus said to him, then the children are free. However, 
so that we do not give offense to them, go to the lake and cast a hook. Take the first fish that comes up, and when you open its mouth, you will find a coin. Take that and give it to them for you and me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, we just completed chapter 17 of the Gospel of Matthew. Transfiguration. We have heard of this episode a number of times about how Jesus transfigured on Mount Tabor. Now, along with Jesus, there were three of his disciples and two of the prophets and Jesus. So altogether six people. Peter, James and John, they are the closest of the collaborators. And these disciples will be with Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane as well. So they have seen here on Mount Tabor the divinity of Christ. When he transfigured, he showed them his glory. He was glorified by the Father. So they have seen him in a dazzling white clothes and God the Father even recognizing him there on the spot and telling the disciples to listen to him. Does it ring a bell? Because at the time of baptism, when Jesus comes out of the water, the heavens open, God the Father telling the people, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, listen to him. Again at Mount Tabor, he uses similar words. Now, Peter, as usual, he takes the initiative of talking there. He said, Lord, it is good for us to be here. It's good for you to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings. In other translations, we see, I will make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And that is the time God intervenes and he says, this is my son, the beloved, with him I am well pleased, listen to him. So it was a second reminder. First time he spoke at the baptism and here again he reminds them, listen to him. You don't talk too much. In other words, Peter wanted Jesus to pitch in and rem remain there. He didn't want Jesus to go down to Jerusalem to suffer and to die on the cross. Whereas God had his own plans and Father, the Heavenly Father wanted the disciples to understand and listen to Jesus so that they don't make a mistake of him seeing him as a political messiah but rather jesus want to be a suffering messiah that is why god the father intervened and told the disciples listen to him you don't decide let him talk but you listen now <clears throat> we see two of the prophets moses and elijah why these two prophets why not all other prophets well moses is the lawgiver Elijah is the greatest of all the prophets. So Jesus is a fulfillment of both the law and the prophets. And Moses and Elijah, they came down to talk to him about the imminent suffering and death on the cross and ultimate resurrection. So Jesus becomes a fulfillment of all the Old Testament, both the law and the prophets. So if you put together the law including the books like you know Leviticus, Numbers and all those, is all pertaining to law, uh, even Exodus, pertaining to law. Whereas the later books, if you see that, a lot of prophets, there are so many prophets that we have seen in the Old Testament. So Jesus is the fulfillment of both the law and the prophets. So that is why the greatest of all the prophets, Elijah, and the greatest of the lawgiver, Moses himself, they came. You remember, he was accused of breaking the law. Here comes Moses himself to talk to him. So they don't understand that he is a lawgiver through Moses. The word, the logos is a lawgiver. Little that they understood at the time. Now, when these things happened, when God the Father recognized, they fell to the ground. The disciples fell to the ground. And Jesus came and touched them saying, get up. 
do not be afraid now that word do not be afraid is always a reminder from god to be courageous he jesus constantly he wanted them to be courageous but they are constantly full of fear when there is fear you don't see the faith the faith disappears when fear comes in and you don't recognize god whereas you need to have courage in order to recognize god in order to see god in your life and then he begins to speak about his imminent death and the ultimate resurrection time and again he reminds them again and then we see jesus curing a boy with the demon now when they come to the people this man comes and pleads lord have mercy on my son for he is an epileptic and he suffers terribly and because of the demon that is in him it makes him to go into convulsions it throws him in the fire it throws him in the water imagine a father seeing his son suffering like that so he pleads with the jesus to do something and in fact he took the boy to the disciples first but they couldn't cast out the demon now when the father says that as a complaint well i took my son to your disciples they couldn't cast him out jesus gets very upset look at the words that he uses you faithless and perverse generation now these words can be used to the generation of today the societies of today to the world of today god uses these same words even today you faithless and perverse generation and then he asks this question how much longer must i be with you he has taught them what is to be done he told the disciples that you got to have faith whereas they don't have faith because of that he asked this question he was very upset very disappointed with the disciples so he asked this question how much longer must i be with you how much longer must i put up with you <laughs> you know it's like how we ask question to sometimes you know to our own family and friends how long can i put up with you so he asked this question how much longer must i put up with you and then he says bring the boy to me here yeah. and jesus rebuke the demon but what do we do you look at jesus he doesn't negotiate with the devil you shouldn't be negotiating with the devil what do we do we negotiate with the devil we entertain him <laughs> we keep him there we don't get him out of our life that is a problem when you entertain when you negotiate you lose your negotiation like say you have got a particular problem a temptation okay now what do you do you give him little trump cards here is a card you can play this trump card with me i will fall for you so we give him some little allowances this is the way that you can control me you can control me by doing this so we tell the devil all our weaknesses remember my dear friends the devil cannot do anything with our strength whereas he can do everything with our weaknesses so do not allow the devil to take over you by your weakness you need to work on the weakness i will give you one example say you lose your temper you lose your patience now what happens there many a times we say maybe a new year resolution or a lenten resolution we say well i will not get angry you know what same day you will get angry instead of saying that you will not get angry say i will be patient i will be kind so work on the virtue rather than the vice when you work on the virtue automatically you grow in the virtue your vice will be going out it's like you open a tap of fresh water under a contaminated water you keep on pouring that fresh water eventually the whole place will be filled with fresh water so to in the practice of virtues you need to be constant when you do constantly the virtues automatically the vices will go out here jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of him and the boy was cured instantly 
and then the disciples asked jesus privately why could we could, why we could not cast it out and then he scolds them again because of your little faith you don't have faith you see my dear friends always jesus gave the credit to the faith of the people he said your faith has saved you always so with that faith he could rebuke when you have faith you can rebuke demon you can scold him you can put him in his place what is his place hell you can send him to hell if you don't have faith you can't do anything you will fall for him as a slave so remember to have faith always be strong in your faith then nothing will come closer to you devil cannot do anything to you nobody will be possessed in your family if you have got faith and main thing if you don't want the devil to come closer go to the eucharist devil cannot stand in front of the holy eucharist if you are regular to confession regular to communion let us see which devil comes closer to you whereas you are far away from confession for years together far away from communion for years together over then what will happen automatically all the problems will be coming so you got to really seriously think about it so he said here because of your little faith and then he says if you have faith at the size of a mustard seed how small is that mustard seed it's a tiny little ball if you have faith at the size of a mustard seed you can say to the mountain to move from here to there and it will move now what happens even at the size of a mustard seed we have got doubt <laughs> half of the size of the mustard seed we have got doubt what can god do about it that's a problem with us this is a problem with us that we are not able to do anything if you have that faith if you are strong enough to have that faith you will work wonders going further jesus again talks about his death and resurrection and then we see the temple tax you know the tax has been always a problem you know time and again we see the pharisees coming and asking do we need to pay the taxes or not and jesus says well you show me the coin whose head is that caesar so i give it to caesar then but give it to god what belongs to him what is due for god reverence love respect absolute devotion obedience all these things belongs to god coin it has got caesar's give it to him that belongs to him and here too about paying the taxes jesus never said don't pay the taxes he said that belongs to them pay the taxes let's move on chapter 18 gospel of matthew chapter 18 true greatness at that time the disciples came to jesus and asked who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven he called a child whom he put among them and said truly i tell you unless you change and become little children you will never enter the kingdom of heaven whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me temptations to sin If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me it would be better for you if a great millstone were fastened around your neck and you were drowned in the depth of the sea woe to the world because of stumbling blocks occasions for stumbling are bound to come but woe to the one by whom the stumbling block comes If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble cut it off and throw it away it is better for you to enter life maimed or lame than to have two hands or two feet and to be thrown into the eternal fire and if your eye causes you to stumble tear it out and throw it away it is better for you to enter life with one eye 
than to have two eyes and be thrown to be thrown into the hell of fire the parable of the lost sheep take care that you do not despise one of these little ones for i tell you in heaven their angels continually see the face of my father in heaven what do you think if a shepherd has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray and if he finds it truly i tell you he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray so it is not the will of your father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost reproving another who sins if another member of your church sins against you go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone if the member listens to you you have regained that one but if you are not if you are not listened to take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses if the member refuses to listen to them tell it to the church and if the offender refuses to listen even to the church let such one be to you as a gentile and a tax collector truly i tell you whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven again truly i tell you if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask it will be done for you by my father in heaven for where two or three are gathered in my name i am there among them forgiveness then peter came and said to him lord if another member of the church sins against me how often should i forgive as many as seven times jesus said to him not seven times but i tell you 77 times the parable of the unforgiving servant for this reason the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves when he began the reckoning one who owed him 10000 talents was brought to him and as he could not pay his lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made so the slave fell on his knees before him saying have patience with me and i will pay you everything and out of pity for him the lord of that slave released him and forgave him his debt but that same slave as he went out came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii and seized him by the throat he said pay what you owe then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him have patience with me and i will pay you but he refused then he went and threw him into the prison until he should pay the debt when his fellow slaves saw what had happened they were greatly distressed and they went and reported to the lord to their lord all that had taken place then his lord summoned him and said to him you wicked slave i forgive you all that debt because you pleaded with me should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as i had mercy on you and in anger his lord handed him over to be tortured until he should pay his entire debt so my heavenly father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart the gospel of the lord praise to you lord jesus christ so dear friends we completed the gospel of matthew chapter 18 let's go through now this this parts of the gospel of matthew are some of my favorite ones there's a lot to reflect a lot to learn 
true greatness. The first thing. The disciples come and ask Jesus, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Now, you see the measuring rod that Jesus uses in order to tell these disciples who is the greatest. He doesn't say hi-fi, highly educated or highly positioned people. No. He didn't say the kings. No. He didn't say the people who follow a great religions. No. He didn't say philosophers or theologians or great thinkers. No. What did he do? The kingdom of heaven that comprises everything in the world, everything in the universe. Who is the greatest? He takes a little child and places him in front of them. He is the greatest. I am sure these disciples must have been kind of shocked. He takes a little child and places. Imagine the greatest in the kingdom of heaven is like a little child. He said, whenever Jesus says, truly I tell you, that means it's a solemn teaching. Okay? So wherever you see in the scripture, wherever Jesus says, truly I tell you, or in other translations you will say, I tell you solemnly, that means it is a solid doctrinal teaching. Okay? Here he tells, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never, he didn't say you may not, like, you know, like us Australians, how we sugarcoat things. No, he didn't say that. He said, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So the entry into heaven is to be childlike, not childish. Childishness is playing tantrum. Childishness is, you know, it's being cranky. <laughs> That's not what God expects us to do. Childlike. Why childlike? When was the last time the, that you observed a little baby or a little child? If you have not done that for a while, please do that. You learn a lot of things. You learn plenty of things from the little children, little babies. First of all, the little babies, you know, they don't have a language. The language that we have taught them, they have not learned yet. The little babies can talk two languages. A language of smile, a language of cry. If they are happy, everything goes well, they are well fed. The people who love them around, they are playing with them and all that, they are very happy, they are smiling. Language of smile. Whereas, the language of cry comes for everything. So the parents will have to figure it out. If the baby cries, they have to figure out whether the baby is hungry or something is biting him or somebody, something is bothering him or he is feeling sleepy. So it is left to the parents to find out. So all over the world, the language of cry and the language of smile are common for babies. Because these two languages are taught by God to every baby when the baby is sent into the world. And then we teach them English and Tamil and Chinese or uh, German or Japanese, whatever that we want to teach, we teach them. Along with that, we also teach them how to be selfish. We also teach them how to be self-centered. We also teach them how to take revenge. We also teach them how to have resentment and all other things. We grown-ups are good at that because we set a perfect example for them to learn all these vices from us. That is why Jesus said, you got to be like little children. So what do these little children have in comparison with us grown-ups? All that we have lost along the way. You know, when we were little, we looked up to the grown-ups and said, oh, I want to be grown-up. So I can buy things, I can own things. Now we are grown up. You buy things and you own things. Are you happy? Why aren't you happy? So now we know that these, these things really don't give us happiness. They don't give us anything. It gives us frustration. It gives us depression. Whereas we look back into the 
world of little children and then we say i wish i remain there i wish i was a little one lindy i never grown up a grown up you see so we want to go back to the world of the little ones but in that world of little ones there are so many virtues that the little children have first of all the little children have tremendous faith in the parents no child no baby demands things from the parents no they have tremendous faith that they will be protected they will be loved if it doesn't happen that's a different thing altogether okay the grown ups commit a crime if they don't give them the protection and the love that they deserve whereas the children have the tremendous faith and the sense of awe and wonder little things can keep the little babies and the children fascinated you take them out they will see couple of lights their eyes will light up they are so happy in that world or couple of balloons can keep them occupied <laughs> let somebody give you two balloons and ask you to be occupied for an hour how frustrated we become you see so we have lost the sense of awe and wonder nothing really fascinates us we are so bored with everything we seems to be knowing everything it is so hard to keep us entertained the third is a sense of surrender have you ever tossed a baby up in the air you know when you toss up the baby the baby comes with a smile down you know the baby has a sense of sense of surrender that you will hold the baby you know the baby is laughing rather than frowning upon you <laughs> let somebody take you up and then toss you up in the air see what happens <laughs> you see the comparison how much we will get upset with that person who tosses up sense of surrender and the other thing that we have got to learn from the little children is the attitude of forgiveness they let go they don't ring around with the things the hurt feelings even if somebody pushes them down in the school or something like that, they get up maybe they may cry after 5 minutes they are fine they are playing with the same person there so they let go but how long we keep the resentment how long we keep the frustration unforgiving nature so these are the things jesus wants of us to learn unless you become like a little children you will never you will never enter the kingdom of heaven what a beautiful words my dear friends and he also told them who were becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven and he added who ever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me now in our church in our parish in glenmore park i have made an unwritten rule that the first priority is for little babies and children so lots of young families come here i have told the parents just keep them in your eye watch and let them run around wherever they want even if the children want to come up to the sanctuary let them come up wherever they want they can go as long as they are in the eyes of the uh, parents to be looked after i don't care if they are running around or talking or playing or anything like that this is a house of god first of all remember they are the owners of the kingdom of heaven including our parish building if they are the owners of the kingdom of heaven if god has given to them the gift of heaven if he has acknowledged that they will enter the kingdom of heaven first why can't they do what they want in the church whereas some grown ups they think that the little children or little babies are distractions <laughs> my goodness you put these people in the middle of northern territory in the middle of the wilderness 
nobody around them or in the middle of a desert somewhere in arabian country still they will be distracted you send these people who are distracted because they are distracted by the little babies you send them up to mars nobody is there nothing is there still they will be distracted such people complain that the little children are distracted it's a big thing to ponder i have told everybody nobody has a right to tell the parents that the children shouldn't be running around or children shouldn't be in the church a church without little children a church that is without little babies is a dead church the church is dead what is the future of the church if the little children are not welcomed they are closer to god than us and god is expecting us to be like them anyway there is plenty to ponder in my opinion nobody should be stopping the little children from coming to jesus that's very important and then we go jesus talking about the temptations to sin all of us can be tempted if jesus can be tempted but it depends upon how we fight the temptation that is really important now here jesus says if any of you put a stumbling block means hindrance before one of these little ones who believe in me he says it is better for you if a great millstone have you seen a millstone you know in olden days i have used one when i was little and i have seen the millstone millstone is like a donut you know it's like a round stone okay there is a kind of hole in between and one side of the round they will have a little stick like you know thick stick and there will be a flat stone underneath and they will put the millstone on top of it and they will put the grain in the middle and they go grinding so as the grain goes down it will be ground and the floor will come out okay so that's a millstone now the millstone is round like a donut so what jesus says if somebody become becomes a stumbling block a great millstone has to be put around the neck means a stone around the neck and he is thrown in the depth of the sea <laughs> that means what sorry i'm laughing i'm just imagining the scene if a person is tied to the stone normal stone a big rock there could be a chance the rope that is around the stone can dislocate from the stone and the body may come up even after drowned and dead the body may come up whereas if he is tied around the neck he can never come up right that means what you get rid of him once and for all if somebody blocks of block somebody becomes a hindrance for you to go into the kingdom of heaven somebody causes you to sin this is what they should be doing <laughs> and he said oh to the world because of stumbling blocks the world these days my dear friends is encouraging people to go to hell you know all these ideologies you know lgbtq you name it all this woke culture the cancel culture it is forcing the people to go to hell it is thrashing all those unnecessary things in the young innocent minds if you believe in something you keep it with you why are you pushing it on others that is exactly the warning that christ gave long time ago woe to the world because of stumbling blocks occasions for stumbling are bound to come woe to the one by whom the stumbling block comes you see if somebody is forcing somebody else to sin to become a hindrance to get into the kingdom of heaven o to that man jesus says it's a serious matter and look at the way that jesus says we have all the faculties ability to see ability to smell ability to touch and taste and love and everything now all the limbs that we have got he says 
if your foot causes you to sin or if your hand causes you to sin or if your eye causes you to sin cut it off that means what you should avoid your sin by all means if these things causes you to sin get it off it it is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and to go into hell fire jesus knows the nature of hell how severe it is he didn't make hell for us he made hell for the devil whereas we choose to go there by our sinful nature we are adamant i always say to people people should be so adamant to go to hell because god gives us his grace so much his forgiveness is abundance he gives so many opportunities for that man to change after all that in spite of all this efforts from god if somebody wants to go to hell he deserves to go to hell nobody can stop god is not going to stop if one thing that god will not mess up with us is a freedom of choice that we choose he will not mess up with that because he gave it to us intellect and free will he will not mess up now if we choose deliberately knowingly willingly to go to hell go to hell commandments i break them precepts of christ i break them values of christ i break them you do all that and then you say god is merciful <laughs> right you will see that what happens and in the name of tolerance these days tolerance is forced a tolerance that is forced is not a real tolerance at all because it goes against its own word tolerance so in the name of tolerance people want anything to tolerate my question would be well you are for tolerance by all means so that means you tolerate terrorism you tolerate murder immediately people take a back step no then why are you pushing it on other things as well they use all these sugar coated highly sophisticated words in order to get their way devil knows how to talk devil is in good vocabulary that is why jesus wanted of us to speak simple language if you mean yes you say yes if you mean no say no anything apart from this comes from the evil one what is the evil one devil so let your language be simple and you mean yes means yes no means no going further the parable of the lost sheep now you see jesus time and again he wants the people mainly he talks about the angels that belong to the little children they are in the presence of god the father in heaven constantly and it is very important that we never despise that's what jesus said is he here in the chapter 18 verse 10 take care that you do not despise one of these little ones for i tell you in heaven their angels continuously see the face of my father in heaven that means what they are in the presence of god immediate presence of god the angels of these little children imagine if you despise one of these little ones straight away their angels the guardian angels will complain to the father <laughs> the news will reach straight away you are done you are done man so that is why jesus says what do you think and he says beautifully a shepherd has 100 sheep 99 did not stray one was lost and then he goes in search of the one now very important thing here he goes in search of the one if he finds truly i tell you he rejoices over it more than over the 99 that went that never went astray so it will not it is not the will of your father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost now what happens is that jesus is a uh, kind of uh, misrepresented sometimes by the people by using this you know he went in search of the lost one fine he identified himself with the sinners fine 
he identified himself with the prostitutes and tax collectors and everything fine now what did he do after that people talk about these things and then they stop now this good shepherd who went after the search in search of that lost one he finds it he takes that sheep on his shoulders what did he do did he say ah oh, great you were lost here now let me be lost with you did the shepherd get lost no he brought that lost one to the 99 and added to the flock that people conveniently forget so they justify by saying we remain in our sinful situation the good shepherd comes there finds us and they stop the story there they don't go further that he brought them back because they choose to be lost they want to remain lost that is why i said earlier if somebody is adamant to go to hell they should go to hell okay there is no point in going and see god the very fact that there is heaven there is hell it's very clear cut not all of the people are going into heaven neither all the people are going into hell there are some who will go into heaven there are some who will go into hell uh, heaven and hell both it depends upon how we live our life it depends so we when we have faith when we know the commandments when we know the precepts and everything and then you break deliberately you got to pay you got to pay and then we see reproving another who sins now so beautiful example my dear friends here i want to explain see the word there is used if another member of the church but in some translations you see in another member of the community and so on anyway here this translation says another member of the church it's very interesting they translated it to church and normally you know it is used as a community and so on anyway this man sins against you now go and have it one on one first first step go and have it one on one if he listens to you you got him okay he doesn't listen to you take two or three because there should be some witnesses around jesus speaks very legal language here so evidence of two or three witnesses are needed there if if he refuses to listen to these tell it to the church that's a third step so first you have it one on one second you take two or three and the third report it to the community and if the offender refuses to listen even to the church treat him like a gentile and a tax collector now one may wonder oh how to treat a gentile and a tax collector we should just get rid of him no what did jesus do to the gentiles and the tax collectors he forgave them life will change see we can do everything we can but only god can change the heart of people we are not capable of doing that the doctors can give medicine but it's god who heals that is why many times we hear the doctor saying well we have done everything we can we can't do anything further because they know they are not capable of healing they are capable of giving medicine so too in the same way only god can change the heart and mind of somebody that is why jesus teaches us pray to the lord of the harvest see and he says if two of you agree <laughs> that's the important thing the problem is that two of us don't agree <laughs> if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask it will be done for you by my father in heaven where two or three gather in my name i am there i am you know the name of god that means what if two or three are gathered in my name god is there among them okay now here he says if you agree two or three agree anything at all and then you ask me my father will give it to you the problem is that we don't have that much of unity as well we don't agree with one another there is always division 
And then he speaks about the forgiveness. Peter comes and asks this question. How many times should I forgive my brother? Seven times? See, seven is the fullness of number at that time, Jesus' time. Now what? Zillions and zillions and everything we speak about. Whereas at that time, seven was the fullness of number. So Peter, he thought to himself, forgiving seven times is a lot of times. So he comes and asks Jesus, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus says, no, I tell you. 70, 7 times. That means what? 70 multiplied by 70, multiplied by 70, multiplied by 70, times 70. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> Peter never asked any, any further question after that. And then we see the parable of the unforgiving servant. It's very interesting. Count on the blessings, my dear friends. Count on the times that God has forgiven us. Sometimes we don't forgive. We keep the grudges for a long, long time. You know? And this man who owed the, man, the master 10,000 talents, that's a huge amount, when he pleaded, the master forgave him. Whereas 200 denarii, he was not ready to forgive. What happens after that is what is important. When the master came to know, that he was severe with his servant, fellow servant, he punished him terribly. Look at that. He calls him, you wicked slave. I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not, should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? Imagine God using the same words like that. Should you not have mercy on your fellow people, fellow parishioners, fellow family members, fellow friends, as I had mercy on you. And in his anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he should pay his entire debt. And then Jesus gives a stern warning. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you. No distinction there. He will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. You got to let go. If you don't let go, if somebody knows only to hurt you, that's all he knows. Leave him there. Why going and getting hurt all the time? If somebody is bad, you keep on talking about that person. Now, that person doesn't bother, he's gone. He hurt you and he's gone. Whereas you keep on talking, that means what? You're hurting continuously yourself. If he knows, that's all that he can do. Let him go. You, ne you need to know better. Let me tell you a little story. There was two friends who were sitting on the lake side. And in that lake water, there was a scorpion. Like trying to survive. It's almost drowning. So the man, the one man said, Oh, there's a scorpion drowning. Let it die. The other said, no, we can't allow that life to die just like that. So he picks, it, picks up the scorpion from the water and leaves him out. The scorpion stings him. Now the other man says, you see, I told you to leave the scorpion as it is. Why did you take? You see, that scorpion stung you. He said in reply, yes, I know. The nature of the scorpion is to sting. But the nature of human being is to save. Now sometimes we swap. We become scorpions in our life. We sting people terribly with all the poisonous venom that we have. Character assassination slaughter them with our gossip without even knowing the truth. We entertain all sorts of divisions. We can be scorpions. Remember that. The nature of the scorpion is to sting but the nature of human being is to love and to save. So with that thought I will stop. That is why Jesus taught us in the prayer our Father Forgive us our trespasses 
as we have forgiven those who trespass against us. So if we have not forgiven, we will not be forgiven either. So if you want to be forgiven, better forgive. Let go. At least for the sake of your good health, let go. You will be free. Taking unnecessary baggage in life makes you full of burdens. You know, when you travel, you take less luggage, your traveling is much more comfortable. Whereas we take huge luggages in our life, <laughs> life journey. Huge luggages. Most of the luggages are useless luggages. How many times when we go away for an overseas trip, we pack up the things that we don't even touch. <laughs> we don't even know that it is there in the luggage and we bring it back home in the same way. That's what we do in life also. We carry luggages, useless, useless luggages. Travel light, life will be beautiful. Life is beautiful. God has created it beautiful. Only thing we make it very, very complicated. So let go of the things, my dear friends. God is there to forgive us. Let it go. All that we need to strive for is to go into heaven. Work for it. We have to work for it. We have to go through the narrow door. It's a hard thing. Work for it. If we can be busy with that, then these things don't matter to us in our life. So with that thought, I will stop. Today is Wednesday. Tomorrow, Thursday. I will see you at the same time. God willing, at the same time. And as usual, I tell you, keep the faith. And the faith will keep you. Good night and God bless you.